The member for Warringah. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I seek leave to move the following motion, that so much of the standing orders be suspended as would prevent the private member's business order of the day relating to the offshore petroleum and greenhouse gas storage amendment stopping PEP 11 Bill 2021, standing in my name, being called on immediately and given priority over all other business for final determination in the House. Is leave granted? The minister? Leave is granted. I thank the minister. The member for Warringah. This motion must be debated today because it deals with vital issues climate change, environmental destruction, and the fate of the economy for a significant portion of the east coast of Australia. Petroleum Exploration Permit 11, known as PEP 11, is a work permit granted under the Offshore Petroleum and Greenhouse Gas Storage Act, Storage Act 2006. PEP 11 covers some 4,575 square kilometres from ocean from Newcastle through the central coast to the iconic Manly Beach. PEP 11 comes as close as five kilometres to the shore in places. Human light of, line of sight on the horizon is over five kilometres, so gas rigs may well be seen from our headlands and beaches. The title holders, Advent Energy and Bounty NL, are permitted to explore for gas and oil in this area, with the aim of mining it and drilling it for future date. Let's be clear, oil is often found alongside gas, so it is a very real prospect. This licence has been hanging over the head of our local communities for too long. I presented a petition to this parliament in February 2020 and have spoken numerous times in this place about the project. I have met with the Minister for Resources, Minister Pitt. The community has written and met with local MPs from both sides of the House. The, the New South Wales government itself has rejected the licence last February, over a year ago. And yet, since Advent Energy has, in June 2021, called for tenders, July 20 of just this year issued, issued for, of tender for drilling and management services. In, on October 14, it has issued a letter of intent to award tenders. As recently as October 20, comments in the media by David Breeze, the executive director of Advent Energy, indicating that they have every intention to proceed with the project, dismissing concerns of local communities. So here we are. PEP 11 is still on foot. Minister Pitt, a National Queensland MP, is still giving enough assurance to Advent Energy that they are seeking tenders for equipment to drill the works on PEP 11. In recent interviews, it's been made clear that Advent Energy have confirmed and believe that the licence will be granted and extended. This raises concerns, serious concerns, about who is making the decisions in this government. This is the government's gas obsession, taken to the extreme of endangering our local economies and coastline. Our local environment sustains our local economy, from coastal ecosystems fishing, tourism and hospitality, our welfare and our health. We have seen through the last 18 months with COVID how important our local environment is. It has sustained us and we have been grateful, and now we urgently need to protect it. The area is in and adjacent to PEP 11 is home to millions of people, a well migration path and an area of significant marine biodiversity. It is therefore absolutely in the public interest that this be dealt with without delay today. With only 10 days before the conference of the parties at COP26, where global leaders will meet in Glasgow to discuss how we will mit mitigate the issue of our time, climate change and global warming, it is urgent that we debate a motion on a bill that will stop a major fossil fuel project. The Bureau of Meteorology has projected that on the current emissions trajectory, Australia will surpass 4.4 degrees of warming in this century. We are set to reach 1.5 degrees of warming in the early 2030s. Australia will warm faster than the rest of the globe and will experience much more impacts from floods, fires, droughts and for coastal community, coastal erosion and cyclones. We are exposed. This is our greatest national security risk and we are falling behind our allies in addressing it. To avert this catastrophe, the International Energy Agency has made clear, and it is one of the most conservative institutions, have stated that there can be no more fossil fuel, no new fossil fuel projects can be developed from this year. Yet here we are with a license to open up gas 
off our coast. Oil and gas exploration risks contamination and pollution of the ocean. Our ocean is fragile and already increase, under increasing threat from climate change and plastics pollution. We cannot and should not risk an oil spill from a drilling rig wrecking our ocean and waterways that are some of the most unique in the world. Many will not forget the Deepwater Horizon spill that occurred in April 2010 in the Gulf of Mexico. Over the period of weeks, it released almost 4.9 million barrels of oil into the ocean, making it the biggest oil calamity of the world had ever seen. The spill extensively impacted the marine environment and did incalculable damage to the fishing and tourism industries that relied on the spill area. The areas adjacent to Pep Pelevin are just as exposed. Just two months ago, the world stood aghast when we saw the Gulf yet again an undersea gas pipeline leak and catch fire, literally setting the ocean alight. This is what can go wrong. Make no mistake, undertaking oil and gas exploration risks disaster off our pristine coast. Pepper Levin could devastate the environment and the economy of all areas adjacent to it. This is why this motion must be debated today without delay, and this bill should be passed. We simply cannot allow it to proceed. The community is united in being object opposed and objecting to this project. We do not want it to proceed. Over 60,000 people lent their names to a petition calling to stop Pepper Levin. The community wishes that PEP 11, then they wish it to be stopped today. I've had hundreds of emails from Warringah constituents and people who are up and down the coast. They're appalled that this project must still get the green light. PEP 11 expired in February 2021, but yet it is still in force, pending the decision of Minister Pitt he, as part of the joint authority in relation to the application by the current title holder. The first application for the suspension, extension and variation of PEP 11 was made, uh, was made to the Joint Authority some 289 days ago, and yet New South Wales government was able to decline it in February 2020, and we are still here waiting for a decision from the federal government. The delay in decisions is causing considerable anxiety and distress in the communities affected by PEP 11. This motion moves that this, the offshore petroleum and greenhouse gas storage cancelling PEP 11 Bill 2021 be debated without further debate. And this, we should do this today because it will act to improve with considerable uh, just the, the uncertainty and preclude any current and future development in this PEP 11 area. And this is so important for our local communities. These communities have been battered and locked down under COVID. They need to rebuild. Our ecotourism, our tourism, our hospitality all need confidence and certainty. And having this risk hanging over them is impacting that confidence in their re rebuild. It's vital that this licence be cancelled without further delay. And we must rule out that any further licence be granted off our coast. Now, there are those who are claiming that some of the benefit of this licence will be to provide carbon and capture and storage opportunities. Let's be really clear about what that is. That is a unicorn fantasy of this government that we can continue to e emit and somehow uh, it won't matter because those rising emissions can be offset. It ignores the fact that we actually need to first reduce emissions. We can't continue the way we are. If carbon capture and storage can be developed to work, then it might assist to capture the excess that we have already put into the atmosphere. But it cannot be used to justify a continuation of dependence on fossil fuel. It doesn't replace that need to reduce emissions. It's already received substantial amounts of public funding to date, and let's be clear, it has failed to deliver. We cannot continue emitting in the hope that magically CCS will solve this problem. And I know the Minister for Energy is a really, really attached to the idea that this unicorn solution will allow us to just continue emitting fossil, um, continue rising emissions. So to protect our oceans and coastal economies and climate change and address climate change, we should deal with this bill today and, it sh and we should pass this legislation. For all those members in this place who have said that they are for climate action and they tell their constituents as such, will you now vote to debate this bill? 
Will you vote with your conscience? It is really important because the time has come where communities are looking to their members of parliament for their actions. The actions you take on behalf of a collective do not, uh, with impunity, excuse your personal actions. Your personal vote matters. Member for Wentworth, member for McKellar, member for North Sydney, member for Robertson have said to their communities they oppose this project. But yet here we are. We are still in the hands of Minister Pitt. It's time that we allow for debate on this bill so that we can vote on it. That we have a test for the this is a test for the government, and it's a test to those MPs. It is a test of their commitment to their communities up and down our coast. The Prime Minister himself has come to Collaroy Beach and said he opposes the project. But yet here we are, a project still on foot, a permit holder still proceeding, decisions being made, and, and the licence is still going ahead. So it really begs the question, who is calling the shots in this government? Because if the Prime Minister has said he doesn't support this project, but yet Minister Pitt is still proceeding with it, it really begs the question exactly who decides what is happening in this government? Who is deciding Australia's climate policy? Is there any real genuine commitment to reducing emissions? These are very real questions the Australian public is looking to this parliament to understand just how real is the commitment. So today, this motion is a test. It is a test to see if there a genuine desire to, de to debate and to take action on legislation that will stop this project. We need to save our coast. Thank you. Is the motion seconded? The member for Shortland. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I proudly uh, second the suspension of standing orders. Standing orders must be suspended because my community and every community along the Hunter and Central Coast and Northern Sydney regions need certainty about this project. The licence for PEP 11 expired on the 12th of February. On the 12th of February, the licence expired. And at that time, Minister Pitt said he would make a decision soon. Well, since that expiration, we've had 251 days of uncertainty for my community. 251 days of my community in agony wanting to know whether they're going to see oil and gas rigs off their coast. And why have we, why have we had this delay? Because Advent Energy continue to work on the project while this uncertainty continues. And what are we talking about, Mr Deputy Speaker? We're talking about offshore oil and gas drilling rigs as close as five kilometres to our pristine coastline, five kilometres to some of the beautiful beaches in my electorate, such as Redhead Beach, endangering our environment and the tens of thousands of jobs that rely on that environment. This project risks thousands of jobs in our tourism and hospitality industries that rely upon our coastal lifestyle. It risks the thousands of jobs in our commercial and recreational fishing industry that rely on our pristine maritime environment, and it risks our beautiful beaches that we all enjoy. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, nipper season is around the corner, and as thousands of kids go back into the water, including my own, I don't want them to be worried about whether this will be the last year they get to enjoy our beautiful beaches. And that's why standing orders must be suspended, and that's why everyone in this chamber must vote in support of this bill. Everyone in this chamber must vote in support of this bill. Members of Parliament, like the members for Robertson, McKellar, North Sydney and Wentworth, who profess to oppose PEP 11 but have gone missing, Mr Deputy Speaker. They say they oppose PEP 11. Well, they need to demonstrate it by not just talking about it, by supporting the suspension, by voting for the suspension, and by forcing the government and the Prime Minister to deliver at least 26 members of their party room to allow the suspension to succeed. And if they don't do that, it's easy for them to get up and say, oh, we oppose it and we'll vote for the suspension, knowing it will fail unless they bring 26 members of their party room with them. And that's the truth. And I'll quote the member for Robertson, who said on the 24th of April, under a Morrison government, PEP 11 will not go ahead. The Prime Minister Scott Morrison said it himself while he was on the coast this week, and he is rock solid on that decision. I'm saying no to PEP 11. The Prime Minister is saying no to PEP 11. Well, I say to the member for Robertson, and I look forward to her remarks, and hopefully she gets up and says the project is dead. But unless, not only, unless you vote for the suspension, unless you vote for the Stegall bill, and unless you bring 26 members of the government with you, it's just hollow words. 
hollow words from people who are members of a government that so far is allowing offshore oil and gas drilling off our coast. That is the truth of it. We'll see some charades here about do they support this, do they support that, but the government can kill this bill with Minister Pitt with a stroke of a pen and failing that with uh, 26 members of the government crossing the floor and voting for the suspension and then the actual bill. And I hope they do, and I'll say well done to them if they do. But if they don't, they will be accused of utter mendacity and hypocrisy, uh, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. They'll be accused of it because there will be empty words where action is needed. And this is about the future of our coastline. This is about the future of tens of thousands of jobs in our community. So I hope Minister Hawke gets up and says something positive about it. I hope Minister Hawke says the project is now dead, because hopefully he can kill it. Hopefully he can um, uh, convince the nationals that really are running this government on climate and energy policy to do the right thing and kill the project. So I'm looking for good words for him. But let's be honest about it. If they do fold, it will only be because of the pressure of members of the Labor Party and independents and the huge community opposition to this project. That is what's delivered this uh, op uh, opposition. That's what's delivered this campaign. This is why we're even debating this bill, because I've never seen a project more opposed to by uh, the entire community than this project. So if the government does fold, if the government does surrender, that is great, and I certainly uh, 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 appreciate that. And I want to congratulate every Labor member of parliament that's, who's been involved in this campaign. Some of them are behind me. The member for Newcastle, the member for Paterson, the member for Dobell, the member for Kingsford Smith and the leader of the Labor Party, Anthony Albanese, who said, if this project is still going ahead when Labor is in government, we will kill it. I cede the remaining five minutes of my time to the member for Dobell. The question is that the motion be disagreed to and I call the minister. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I want to speak briefly to this matter. The government will oppose the suspension of standing orders for the following reasons. Um, we obviously have many members here, and I've got two of my colleagues, the member for Robertson and the member for McKellar, here who are going to speak to this and their serious opposition and concern. There is uh, concern about an individual project uh, from local communities on the North Shore of Sydney and Central Coast, members here, the member for Warringah as well. It's quite appropriate that be uh, discussed and the subject of representations to government, and it has been. But I say to the member for Warringah, if you're serious about legislating and if you are serious about doing something or changing a law, it would be incumbent upon you to go to other affected communities and local members on the North Shore. This isn't a political matter. This is a community matter. This is an environmental matter. Um, and you're not in a political party, as we understand. Uh, but what you should do is approach the member for McKellar and the member for Robertson and discuss your concerns with them and seek to get some consensus about what you might be doing and what you want to do. So for today, of course, we won't proceed with uh, the member for Warringah's proposal from the government's perspective to suspend standing orders. It doesn't mean that this important conversation can't continue. It will. In fact, the advocacy from the member for McKellar and the member for Robertson is very strong. And you've heard a very significant statement of intent from a prime minister, the strongest statement you could get on a matter such as this, which gives the community that certainty that members here are seeking. We have to also recognise, of course, that in balancing our environmental commitments, protecting our marine environment uh, and, of course, communities on coasts, we also do have offshore petroleum interests across the country. Uh, they create jobs and wealth. They, they help local communities in many parts of our country as well. All governments have to strike balances between these things, and it's appropriate for this conversation to continue. It's appropriate for us to legally look at those questions and what can be done within the frameworks of the law. The government will continue to balance those things. It will continue to work with communities across Australia. By using activism to do something in a, in a, face, in a, in a hasty way that the, the member for Warringah is proposing today, these things can have consequences for the sovereign investment framework for Australia, for our, our stability as an investment profile for very important projects that we might want to continue all around Australia that are appropriate for those communities, that are environmentally welcomed and that are safe. The government's got a very strong statement of intention here. The Prime Minister couldn't have been more clear. The member for McKellar is very clear about his community, and the member for Robertson is very clear about hers, and the member for Shortland here is also very, very strong. Um, there is more to discuss. But I do say to the member for Warringah, and I have spoken to the minister, you know, seek a meeting with the minister and discuss it with him if you have these concerns. Go to your local neighbours and friends in, in the North Shore communities. This isn't just an issue that affects the community of Warringah. It affects 
the entire coastline of Sydney. And I do think there's a, a time for you to go and, and have a collegiate approach on this as well. So the government doesn't support the suspension of standing orders. And I look forward to the contributions okay. of the member for Robertson and, uh, and obviously McKellar. Um, and the government welcomes, of course, the ongoing um, assessment of these process and uh, the statement of intent that the government's put forward. The question is that the motion be disagreed to, and I call the member for Dobell. Deputy Speaker, my community on the central coast of New South Wales is against PEP 11. People living up and down the coast, from Newcastle to Sydney and across Australia, are against PEP 11. Yep. And yet, Minister Pitt still hasn't made a decision. Eight months after his original deadline, eight months after his original deadline, and today we're told not to be hasty and the government is gagging debate. This is a project that will devastate our coastline, our local marine life and our local economy. That's why I stand against PEP 11. That's why all of my colleagues, all of my colleagues on this side of the House stand against PEP 11. Last year, with colleagues, we met with members of the government as well, with the Surfrider Foundation and Save Our Coast on the lawns of Parliament House, calling on this government to stop PEP 11 calling on this government to stop PEP 11. In February, I stood with my Labor colleagues, many of them who are in the House today, yep. the, the member for Newcastle, the, the member for Kingsford Smith, the member for Patterson, yep. and all of all my colleagues up and down the coast stood together with Labor leader Anthony Albanese as we announced Labor's, Labor's united opposition to PEP 11. In April, with Liesl Tesh, the state member for Gosford, I joined the Surfrider Foundation and Save Our Coast, paddling out against PEP 11, paddling out against PEP 11 with Ace Buchan, international surfing champion. Then in August, I joined a virtual town hall with advocacy groups to reaffirm my opposition to PEP 11. And I'm not the only one. In my community, over 1,800 people have signed a petition to stop PEP 11, and thousands more from Newcastle, Sydney, across Australia. We know that Save Our Coast has collected 77,000 signatures to stop this flawed project and this risky plan to drill for fossil fuels within PEP 11. Within PEP 11. And in my community, the opposition is it's, it's across the community. Uh, Glenn from Barrow Bay wrote to me, I've been able to raise my children here on the central coast, passing on to them a love for our ocean, coastline and marine life. The excitement of dolphins swimming close to them, their looks of amazement at the sight of whales fully breaching still gives me a feeling of happiness. Cathy from Berkeley Vale said, the beach is our happy place. We moved up from Sydney a few years ago and have a quieter and more relaxed life here on the coast. We love it here. For our family of five, we love going to the beach as our way to reset. She's echoed the views of hundreds of locals across the central coast. According to the Environmental Defender's Office, the PEP 11 project could see drilling commence in a world-renowned whale migration route and dolphin habitat, risking devastating the marine ecosystem and exposing locals from Newcastle to Manly to the central coast to the prospect of petroleum spills or gas rigs just kilometres from the coastline. Locals are acutely aware of this risk. Even Ben and Jerry's even Ben and Jerry's have spoken against, uh, against this project, making it clear that they do not want this project to go ahead. But the minister still hasn't made a decision. The minister has still not made a decision. The New South Wales government is opposed to PEP 11. They declared this earlier this year. The New South Wales government said they're opposed to PEP 11. As part of the joint authority, Minister Pitt, Minister Pitt can make this decision with a stroke of a pen today. And he's failing to do so. Absolutely. Failing to do so. Minister Pitt could do this with a stroke of a pen today. But he still hasn't made a decision. And now we're being told by the government that this is too hasty, <laughs> that we're trying to move too quickly. And this is why they're suspending debate today. More than a decade. More than a decade. An opposition up and down the coast. Because this will devastate our communities, our marine life and our way of life. And we're told that this is hasty, that we're moving too quickly. Do you know what the government has? A complete lack of urgency. A complete lack of urgency from the government. Either they don't get it or they don't care. And members opposite, members opposite can stand and speak in support 
of, of, the, of the private members' bill today, but you know what they could do? They could advocate strongly in their caucus. They could advocate for the government to make a decision, to make a decision today. They could call on Minister Pitt to do the right thing, to do the right thing by our community, to do the right thing by our environment, to do the right thing by our economy and make this decision today. So, members opposite, speak, speak today. But I urge you, do the right thing. Don't say one thing in your electorate and another thing in this House. Do the right thing by our community. Make Minister Pitt make the decision that our community needs and deserves and is long overdue. Yeah. You can speak up in this House and you can say another thing in your electorate. You need to do the right thing on PEP 11 for all of us and call on the minister to make a decision today. This is with a stroke of a pen. We don't need this private member's bill, although we fully support it because the government won't act. Now we're preparing for this push and we will vote for this if we get the chance to vote for it. But the minister said they won't. It'll be suspended. We won't get the opportunity. Right. A private member's bill to stop PEP 11 will support. I'm prepared to support this bill, so are my colleagues. But you've already adjourned the debate and now you're suspending standing orders. That's why I'm urging the minister to put an end to the uncertainty for my community. He has the power to stop PEP 11 with a stroke of a pen today. Do what's right, minister. This is dragged on for too long. Yeah. The question is that the, the uh, motion be disagreed to, and I call the member for Robertson. I thank you, Deputy Speaker. And in rising to speak against the suspension of standing orders, I firstly want to say very loudly that I remain firmly opposed to PEP 11. However, the member for Warringah's motion, supported by members of the opposition this morning, to suspend standing orders is not the best way to achieve this outcome that they seek. And indeed. It only adds to the cacophony of confusion and misinformation that has been surrounding this issue, and there's been plenty of that, we all know. My colleague, the Minister for Immigration, is absolutely right. This is a community issue. It is not a political issue. Let's all work together to achieve the outcome that so many of us support. This permit has been around for five decades, and it's been a long-running issue for communities from Manly through to the Central Coast and right up to Newcastle. Our community on the Central Coast is a sea-based community. Our local beaches, our oceans are part of our way of life, and that's why the Central Coast, as the member for Dobell said, is so firmly opposed to anything that could harm our beaches or waterways. Our Central Coast community has spoken very loudly, and I have consulted with a wide range of local action groups. I've received countless emails, letters, messages from thousands of local residents, and I joined with hundreds of them, including the member for Dobell, at a protest rally of a paddle out at Terrigal Haven earlier. But as, uh, as I would remind the member for Dobell, this is not a political issue, this is a community issue. I have taken these concerns directly down to the Minister for Resources. I have taken them directly to the Prime Minister. And the message that I got very clearly back from the Prime Minister is loud and clear. And the, the member for Shortland referred to it. Under a Morrison government, PEP 11 will not go ahead. That is a rock solid guarantee. And that is why the motion before the House this morning really achieves nothing for communities up and down the New South Wales coast. The Prime Minister has said he thinks it's the right decision to oppose the extension of the PEP 11 licence. He said that he is clear on what his view is. I am clear on what my view is and what our community's view is. And under a Morrison government, PEP 11 will not go ahead. Although I acknowledge what the member, the member for Warringah's interest in PEP 11 and the support of the opposition in this particular motion, the decision by the Prime Minister of Australia is resolute. Deputy Speaker, this issue is too important in our region to get wrong. The Prime Minister has said no to PEP 11. My community has said no to PEP 11. I'm saying no to PEP 11, but I would remind the member for Warringah and members opposite that the best way to achieve the outcome that you all and indeed many of us in this chamber seek is through the proper processes of government, not political stunts. So the question is that the motion be agreed to, and I give the call to Member for Kingsford Smith. Thanks, Deputy Speaker. I support the motion to suspend standing orders moved by the member for Warringah to debate her bill and vote on it to kill PEP 11. Yes. This parliament can kill PEP 11 today, and we should. Yep. Petroleum Export Permit 11 would grant Advent Energy 
the option to continue to explore for gas and oil off the coast of New South Wales, all the way from the mid-north coast down to the Newcastle region. It's a ridiculous proposal. It will have a detrimental effect on our environment. And when the economy is beginning to open up again, we're going to kill one of the potential great uh, benefits for the uh, New South Wales economy in our tourism industry and all of the jobs that are created by tourism. That's the whale migration highway up and down this coast, and a proposal like this would absolutely destroy that important industry for Australia. It's environmental vandalism at its worst, and it should be put to bed today. Now, the parliament has the opportunity. How long do we have to debate this? The, the permit expired well over 10 months ago, so the government should have made a decision on this by now. But the minister, Mr Pitt, won't make a decision. Well, the member for Warringah's bill says the people of Australia want a decision made, and they want that decision made now. And this parliament has the opportunity to do that now. So no amount of weasel words from the member for Robertson, the member for McKellar, the member for Wentworth and the minister trying to get out of this and saying, oh, yeah, we don't support PEP 11 uh, and we want to kill it as well. We have got the opportunity. Exactly. Let's do it today. Let's finish this debate and let's move on to debating, de debating the member for Warringah's bill and killing PEP 11 once and for all. The question before the chair is that the motion be disagreed to, and I give the call to member for Melbourne. Thank you, uh, oh, Deputy my Speaker. Apologies, member for Melbourne. It's supposed to alternate. I didn't. No, no, it's a member for McKellar. He was I didn't there. notice a member for McKellar on his feet. He was on his feet. He was on... I don't know what he did. Okay. All right. Sorry. The member for Melbourne has the call. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Greens support this move from the member for Warringah. The Greens oppose PEP 11. We're in a climate crisis. Everyone from the United Nations to Joe Biden to Boris Johnson to the Conservative International Energy Agency has said there is no room for new coal, oil and gas projects. So on climate grounds alone, we should stop the expansion of new fossil fuel projects because we're going to end up with stranded infrastructure. We're going to end up with stranded infrastructure when the rest of the world shifts to a zero pollution economy. But as our New South Wales Senator Marie-Reen Faruqi has been pointing out, together who has been and worked side by side with the uh, very strong community who is speaking very, very loudly, we're going to damage some of the most pristine and valuable area of our coast. And as Senator Peter Wish Wilson, our spokesperson for Healthy Oceans, who's also been part of this campaign, has made the point. The damage that is going to be done to our oceans is significant, not just from the drilling, but even from the seismic testing. And we've seen that in areas around Tasmania. So if we're concerned about our climate, if we're concerned about our oceans, if we're concerned about all the people whose livelihood is dependent on healthy oceans and a beautiful coastline, then we must stop PEP 11. The government should support this. There is no reason for the government to oppose this. And politicians giving weasel words to say, oh, we're going to stop it, but they're not actually stopping it, is part of the reason that communities have so much distrust in politics in the first place. And when the government comes here and says this is a community issue, well, the community has spoken. The community has spoken loud and clear and said stop PEP 11. So the community has spoken, I say to all of those Liberal MPs who were saying, no, don't proceed with action in parliament because it's a community issue. Well, the community has spoken. And they're after the government to do something very simple that the government can do and is within its power to do, which is to say it is not going to proceed and make that law, make that legally binding. Because until the government does, people are right to be suspicious. People are right to say, why does the Prime Minister and the local member say one thing but then refuse to put it into law? So if the government's not going to do it, then the parliament should. And that's why we support the member for Warringah's suspension today, because it is putting into law what the community is asking. And I hope that the government supports this today. The Greens will be proceeding with our bill in the Senate to stop offshore 
oil and gas drilling, because that is what we need to do. And I welcome the broad range of support for this motion today, and I hope it translates into other areas, like stopping the fracking of the Beetaloo or stopping new coal, oil and gas projects elsewhere, because that would only be logical. But right here today, the Greens throw our support behind this move and will continue to fight side by side with the community, because now the government has the chance not just to have the odd member say something, perhaps even have the odd member cross the floor, but the government has the chance to stop PEP 11. And if the government's not going to do it, the parliament should make them. The question before the chair is that the motion be disagreed to, and I give the call to the member for McKellar. Thank you, Deputy <laughs> Chair. Um, Deputy Chair, I stand here today as someone who is implacably opposed to PEP 11 and offshore drilling off the coast of Sydney, Newcastle and elsewhere. Early, late last year, I um, moved a motion in this chamber calling on the government to do that. I was supported at that time by the member for Robertson, by the member for Wentworth, by the member for North Sydney. Since that time, it is important to note that the New South Wales government, a joint, a joint signatory to the joint authority, has come out opposed to this project. Since that time, it is important to note that the Prime Minister went to the Central Coast, more than Anthony Albanese has ever done, or the member for uh, wherever, and said to the people— um, the member for McKellar will ignore the interjections because they're about to stop. The member for McKellar. Thank you, McKellar. Deputy Chair. And said to the communities that he was opposed to this licence. Why I am opposed? Why I am opposed to us suspending standing orders and bringing on a debate on this bill is that there has been no consultation with this side of the parliament over this. And I have a note. You know, the, the, the opposition leader may be interested in this because I know he doesn't mind spending other people's money on, on things, but I have a note from a constitutional lawyer in the parliamentary library that says that if we pass this bill, it opens, it opens, it opens the taxpayers of Australia to a claim on just terms to potentially hundreds of millions of dollars to add Van Energy. So I'm surprised those opposite are suddenly in favour, are suddenly in favour of subsidising fossil fuel companies to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, do I want Minister Pitt? Do I want Minister Pitt to have made a decision not today but yesterday on this? Absolutely. I, this has dragged on too long. And let us not forget how all this started. This all started when the Carr Labor government in New South Wales decided to grant a licence to fossil fuel companies to poke and prod and blast the oceans off Newcastle with sonars and disturb the, life for the, um, the sea life in those areas for 25 years. That has happened. The Labor Party did that, Deputy Chair, not the Liberal Party. And now at the end of it, when we are trying to clean up the mess that they created, that they created, they now want to bring a bill to this parliament without due process, without looking at it, without people examining the imp impacts of it and potentially opening the taxpayer of Australia to a compensation claim of hundreds of millions of dollars because they can't even be bothered consulting with us, they can't even be bothered reading it and they can't even be bothered taking advice on it. What would we expect? from the Labor Party. They can't work with anyone to get anything else done. And I'm surprised that the member for Melbourne, who apparently is the leader of the Greens, now wants to give hundreds of millions of dollars to fossil fuel companies. So instead of working through the process, which I concur has taken far too long for Minister Pitt to reach a decision, but such is, but such is the nature of Mopsema and these regulatory authorities. But at least he is going through the process and he is not seeking to use other people's money to compensate energy companies that should never have been given a licence by the Labor Party in New South Wales, hundreds of millions of dollars as they go through the process of trying to prove that after 25 years of looking for gas and oil where there is no gas and oil, that they should continue to hold this licence for no good reason is just extraordinary. And for this to occur, just as we are getting to the end of the process, reminds me of the old Chinese proverb that it's like the crow trying to take credit, the rooster trying to take credit for the sun coming up. 
We have gone through this process. We have diligently worked our way through it. I'm opposed to PEP 11. I'm opposed to the environmental damage it could do. I have stood up in this parliament. I have taken on my own government over this. I have fronted Keith Pitt and told him that a decision needs to be made. However, I don't see that on the other side. All I see is political stunts that never seem to know any end. The question before the chair is the motion be disagreed to, and I give the call to the Leader of the Opposition. Thanks, thanks very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Well, what an extraordinary contribution from a government member. You would think that he was in no position to actually make a decision. This is a decision of this government. The New South Wales government have come up, out with a good position on PEP 11. Those opposite, those opposite Keith Peart, the minister, is in a position to rule this out today, to make a decision today, which would be not as good as making a decision yesterday and not nearly as good as making a decision last month and nowhere near as good as making a decision last year, but at least it would be a decision. Yep. The fact is that I travelled up with the member for Dobell. We stood at Terrigal and made it very, very clear that we were opposed to PEP 11. That was a process that went through our processes of uh, shadow cabinet, went through all of our processes through our caucus unanimously because this is a bad proposal. It is no wonder that the member for Warringah now sits on a crossbench That's rather right. than as a Liberal Party member, because the truth is that the people of the northern beaches have been abandoned by this government. The people of the coasts in the central coast have been abandoned by this government. The people of Newcastle and the Hunter have been abandoned by Absolutely. this government. The people of Sydney around the Kingston Smith and, indeed, Wentworth electorate have been abandoned by this government as well. This is uh, the PEP 11 proposal. At the time, Keith Pitt, of course, has given various interviews where he has said uh, that uh, there's a whole lot of investment and that that investment comes from shareholders and therefore we need to take that into account. Uh, what the PEP 11 uh, proposal is, is for offshore offshore drilling mm -hmm. off some of the most pristine beaches in the most densely populated communities of our nation. Yep. Of our nation. And the idea that you would have oil drilling off the, off the beaches, be they Manly or be they Maroubra <laughs> or be they Bondi or Terrigal or Avoca or Newcastle Merriweather is just extraordinary proposition, a complete no-brainer. But a government uh, led by a man who has had a, 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 an attitude towards the environment of ridiculing renewable energy, of ridiculing electric vehicles, of ridiculing anything to do with uh, protecting our pristine natural environment in this country by taking action on climate change but also on other environmental issues, it's not surprising. It's not surprising that you have uh, the uh, Minister uh, for Resources in a position whereby he never sees anything he doesn't want to dig up, <laughs> never sees anything. So rather than have, though, a strong environmental environmental position to balance up the need for extraction of resources but the need to balance up as well our natural, our natural environment, what we have from this government is a let it rip approach, a let it rip approach that has complete disregard uh, for uh, these issues. And it, it's interesting that uh, the member for McKellar, in his rather bizarre contribution uh, here today, spoken as if uh, he had no influence really over the government. Spoke about his lobbying of of, of Minister Minister Pitt. Um, he didn't speak about his lobbying of the Environment Minister. <laughs> not not a word, not a word. The Environment Minister just sits there, sits there, does nothing, uh, doesn't take any action, doesn't take environmental protection seriously at all. It's no wonder that the, the member for McKellar is under siege, 
uh, from uh, local community organisations uh, in his own electorate because he's shown himself to be impotent. Uh, he was okay at taking action to remove uh, the former member, yeah. McKellar, uh, from, from this parliament. And, 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 I, and I say to the, the member for Warringah, the member for McKellar, that uh, I congratulate him on, on that effort. Uh, but since he arrived here, since he arrived here, he hasn't troubled the scorers. Hasn't troubled the scorers. Here we have, here we have a proposition, a proposition, uh, just like uh, we all have responsibility for our electorate. There was a proposal a few years ago for coal seam gas drilling in St Peter's in my electorate. A, a rather uh, interesting proposition uh, that uh, that that was uh, that was put forward. And uh, I joined with the community in opposing uh, that proposal because it simply wasn't appropriate. Uh, there is a role for resource extraction in this country, uh, but let me just say this as well: the resources sector is undermined as a whole by proposals like this. Yeah, this damages this damages the resources sector's reputation, yeah, so which is why legitimate resources. Uh, businesses are horrified by this proposal yeah, absolutely. because they all get tarred with this brush. Yep. The resources sector is very important for employment. And here we have the proposition before this parliament with the suspension of standing orders that the member for McKellar has said he's going to vote against. Let's be clear about what he's voting against. He's voting against, if he votes against this proposition, he's voting against the member for Warringah having a debate on her bill. Yeah, exactly. He's not voting against the bill. He's not voting against the bill. He's voting against the bill being debated and determined by this parliament. And this is a parliament that used to be able to debate issues, that used to have suspensions of standing orders and leave used to be granted to have discussion. I've sat in this parliament under the Howard government as well as under the Rudd government and under the Gillard government and had debates about private members' bills. Mm -hmm. I've moved private members' bills in this parliament. Uh, we have had debates about significant issues both here and in the Federation Chamber and had those issues determined by the parliament. That's called democracy. What this government, how this government approaches how this government approaches these issues is just to shut down debate. And normally it's only because this motion's been moved by an independent member that I've been able to contribute to this debate, which is why I didn't want to miss the opportunity. <laughs> didn't want to miss the opportunity uh, to make a contribution consistent with my stand on this issue. But to be very clear, this is a suspension of standing orders to allow the member for Warringah to have a debate about an issue which quite clearly is, is of interest to a range of members in this House, not the least of which is uh, the, the member for Shortland, the member for Dobell, the member for Newcastle, the member for Kingston Smith, as well as the member for McKellar, the member for Robertson, uh, the member for Melbourne and the member for Warringah. So it seems to me to be quite extraordinary that you would have a debate then uh, not allowed, which is why this suspension should just go through on the voices uh, if they are fair income at all. But if the member for McKellar and the member for North Sydney and the member for Robertson vote against this motion, let me tell you that it won't just be the member for Warringah telling her constituents about it, it will be others as well. Because uh, this could be the, this PEP 11 project should be consigned to the dustbin of history where it belongs. The dustbin of history where it belongs. But here we have, here we have a government, a government that has been in office towards the end of its third term. They're approaching. They're in the pre-caretaker mode already. Pre-caretaker, pre-caretaker, struggling as they are, struggling as they are to get to 2022 as they fall apart with chaos over climate change on, on 
the, on the opposite. <laughs> They've got a conference in 10 days' time, but they don't have a government position as of, yeah. as of today yeah. on yeah. net zero by 2050. It, it is just extraordinary. But they don't have a position on this either. And this is not a big call. This is a complete no-brainer. Uh, Minister Pick could make a decision immediately, which would have meant that the member for Ringa uh, wouldn't have to proceed uh, with her bill. And that's a preferred action. Uh, so the, the, the minister should just do his job and say no to this proposal. So I remind the House that the member for Warringah has removed a suspension of standing orders. So the question before the House is that the motion be disagreed to, and I give the call to the minister. I move the motion be put. The minister has moved that the motion be put. All those in agreement say aye. aye. Those against no. no. Uh, Sorry. Sorry, I'll just repeat. I'm put, the mem minister has moved that the motion be put. Yeah. All those in agreement say aye. aye. Those against no. Declare the motion carried. So the question before the chair is that the motion, moved by the member for Warringah, be disagreed to. All those in agreement say aye. aye. Those against no. no. I think the ayes have it. No. The noes have it. Yes. Ring the bells for four. Is the division required? Yes, yes. Ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors. The question is that the motion be disagreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Nichols and Gray, tell us for the ayes, and the honourable members for Werriwa and Lawler, tell us for the noes. Order. The result of the division is ayes 52, noes 48. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. I just move to the next item of business. Uh, I have received advice from the Chief Government Whip nominating members to be members of certain committees. I'm just waiting for the minister. <laughs> the minister. I, I ask leave of the House to move a motion for the appointment of members to certain committees. Is leave granted? No. The manager of opposition business. No. Leave is not granted. And we'll go to the next item of business. And I will call the clerk.